the sex just isn't that good. And then you wonder, how can everyone in the movies and in romance novels have fierce, combustible sex when you and your partner can barely create a spark? TV shows and movies give us a very skewed representation of what sex is supposed to be like, says Logan Lovecoff, PhD, a sexologist, relationship expert, and the author of the ebook, How to Get Your Wife to Have Sex with You. Everyone seems to be climaxing and having orgasms all the time from whatever they are doing. And I think when you grow up on a diet of that, when your real life doesn't match, you think, there's something wrong with me or there's something wrong with my partner. Real life sex can almost never measure up to the passion portrayed on the screen, says Isadora Ullman, a California-based sex therapist. People don't talk about the fact that it's likely that in an odd position, you'll pass gas, or the love of your life will take you in his arms and have bad breath. Sex in this world isn't perfect, and it doesn't always end with the earth-shattering climax. But it doesn't have to, Leekoff says. Good sex doesn't necessarily have to be with an orgasm. It can just be an emotionally fulfilling experience between two partners. No matter how blah your sex may be, it can get better. The key, says our experts, is to know exactly what you want and then ask for it. You long foreplay sessions, your partner is ready to go in an instinct. You long wet, sensual kisses, he prefers dry little pecks. Your partner needs sex twice a day. You can't handle it more than three times a week. Even when everything in the relationship isn't working, sexual styles aren't always compatible. That's especially true for new couples. Sex isn't just naturally perfect, Allman says. There is energy of a new relationship that is positive. The excitement and the eagerness and the passion and the negative is that you bump noses or knees because you just haven't learned how to dance together yet. Even long-term couples can struggle in the bedroom. Though we can easily tell our partner what shirt we'd like them to wear, what we'd like them to cook for dinner, on the topic of sex, we tend to get our tongue tied. People tend to be very sensitive when it comes to talking about sex. They're afraid of hurting their partner's feelings so they don't tell them what they like or don't like, says Rachel Sussman, a relationship and family therapist in New York and the author of The Breakup Bible. You're not going to get it unless you ask for it. So how do you tell your partner what you want without bruising his or her ego? I think it's really how you bring up the statement, Lekoff says. I would love it if we, or, could we try this? You don't want to make them feel bad about it what they've done or haven't done. You can have a conversation in bed or at dinner over a glass of wine. Whatever is most comfortable for you, before you talk, you need to know exactly what about your sex life bothers you. Is it a question of technique, personal hygiene, timing? Once you know what isn't working for you, there are always ways you can suggest that can change those circumstances, Allman says. For example, if something about your partner's smell is turning you off, suggest taking a bath together before making love. If you crave more foreplay, ask for slower seeds into sex. Before you tell your partner what you want him to do or her to do in bed, you need to know what you like. I think especially for women, They've got to explore their own bodies. You have to masturbate. Get a vibrator. Get some books. Teach yourself how to orgasm, Sussman says. Once you've figured out what you want and shared it with your partner, what if your sex life continues to be dull or unfulfilling? What if it's so bad that it's threatening to your relationship? After you try talking and the sex isn't working, then what? Experiment together, Sussman says. Learn to get to know each other's bodies. Try some sex aids. Read books with pictures, such as The Joy of Sex, or watch an educational video together, Allman recommends. Not porn, but explicit videos 
in which a voiceover explains what's happening behind the scenes. Sometimes the problem is a physical one, such as premature ejaculation, or maybe the stress from your job is bleeding over into the bedroom and disrupting your sex life. In those cases, it can help to see a sex therapist. They unravel why the two of you are not getting along, Allman says, and then they try to remedy that. If you're still unsatisfied, is it okay to fake it in bed? Experts say no. If you're faking it, you're doing yourself a disservice because you're not learning what really turns you on, Sussman says. I think eventually it takes a toll. Your partner's gonna realize that you're disconnected. Can sex ever be bad enough to consider ending a relationship over? Possibly. You might really love somebody and the sex is never gonna be more than okay. You have to decide whether it's livable with, Allman says. The fact is, in many cases, you have to either accept that the sex is never going to be mind-blowing, or you have to leave. Whenever you're considering a breakup or a divorce, you need to weigh every element of the relationship and not just the sex. You can't have everything in life, Sussman says. If you have a wonderful relationship and you love each other, and you have kids, but the sex isn't great, maybe you could live without that. In most cases, though, you shouldn't have to break up or settle for mediocre sex. As long as you're willing to put a little effort into it, Sussman says every couple has the potential to have good sex. If you're two emotionally and physically healthy people, you should be able to work with what you got. Not everybody needs to be hanging off their chandelier, Sussman says. You can get better, but you have to practice, and you have to be open to discussing it and get in help when you need it.